What's going on everyone, this is Joshua, this is going to be a spoiler free audio movie review of the latest MCU entry, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Now this just came out last Friday, this is the 30th movie of the MCU. Hard to believe, isn't it? This is once again written by Ryland Coogler and stars Letitia Wright, Lupita Nyong'o, Dorero Winston Duke, Tenage Huerta, Martin Freeman, and Angela Bassett. And without getting into any type of spoilers, this is a simple premise. The people of Wakanda fight to protect their nation in the wake of King T'Challa's death. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, all my social media links are in the description box down below to my Facebook, all the way up to my Serialize. So you could follow me on all my social media links in the description box down below. If you'd like to send money to my Cash App, that's down there as well. As well as my Amazon wish list is also in the description box down below. So with that being said, if you'd like to send anything there, my the wish list is available so with that being said this is going to be a very concise and very tightly said review for wakanda forever everyone knows me knows that i am a big fan of the first black panther what it did for black representation what it did for the culture of the different black community and also because of everything this movie had to give works in his favor and this movie because of his main actor Chadwick Boseman and going into this I was very excited to see another Black Panther movie I really loved the first one aside from some pretty weak CGI but plans for this movie did have to change of course with the coronavirus and then also in the unfortunate passing of Chadwick Boseman so this movie not only had to deal with the COVID situation, but this movie also had to deal with the loss of its main franchise, actor. So how do you make a sequel to Black Panther without your main actor? And honestly, I think they did the best job they possibly could here. This is a two hour and 41 minute emotional heavy drama in MCU. And honestly, this is probably one of my favorites of Phase 4 thinking about it after seeing it this is a very emotional heavy poignant and tragic sequel but it's also a very beautiful well done mcu superhero film that's not your usual mcu film and the thing that makes this movie works in its favor is ryan coogler's direction and everyone coming to work knowing what they had to do following the death of Chadwick this movie straight up just tells you that this is not going to be an action type heavy movie this is going to be a more mature a more emotional very dark film in this series this had the biggest task of closing out this current phase because this phase has been a bit of frustration even though there are some things i really like but also having to make its movie without its main star and coogler the cast and crew and fahi everyone at marvel had a monumental and very tragic one task to make but this movie works in favor with its heavy story and the themes about grief and loss and tragedy and pain immediately watching this movie you can tell that everyone in wakanda is feeling the grief and working the real life tragedy into this movie you definitely feel that grief you definitely feel the pain that everyone has to endure in wakanda because they not only lost their king, but everyone behind the scenes during the makeup of this movie, they lost a friend. And I think they did the best job they could in honoring Chadwick Boseman with some very loving tributes throughout this. They don't really go too far in saying how his character dies. It is shown in the beginning of the movie without seeing him off screen, obviously because of what's happened. But the way they went about it, I thought is very respectful and they did the best they could. And I know there's been some people online who still say they should recast T'Challa. I, I am going to say right now, I don't think they should recast him because even though another actor 
would do good and even though T'Challa is just a fictional character you're not going to get any better than Chadwick it's just not going to happen so I think the decision of what they do in this movie for me personally it works cinematography aspects this is a very well, a very well beautifully lit movie from the production design the cinematography work and the costume design everyone does a great job at what they have to offer here in terms of cinematography and production design and costumes and makeup also the effects here are way better there were some good effects in the first black panther but when you got to that end fight that's where it started to show a little bit of weirdness even though Marvel has been a bit of heavy weight in the competition with having some unfinished effects a few times with Black Widow at the end and She-Hulk. I can tell that the effects they wanted to make it look good as possible. And it looks great as possible. Especially the underwater world that they have in this movie. When it comes to Tanach Huerta's Namor character. Who I will say right now, Namor is a great villain. He is an amazing villain here. He's one of the best. His motivation is similar to Killmonger. But I think the performance was just as great, if not better, than Michael B. Jordan's Killmonger. He's definitely in the top 10 best MCU villains, or in my favorite MCU villains for sure, if not top 10. Acting-wise, everyone brings their A-game. Angela Bassett and Letitia Wright, they have to carry this movie on the shoulders. Letitia Wright, from having to deal with injuries on set, and also the fact that this is also her friend that she's grieving over so it doesn't feel like you're watching them act at times it feels like they're just all doing a fantastic job here especially Letitia Wright and Shuri you see the grief and the emotion and the pain that she's having to go through the loss including the cycle of violence and Letitia Wright does a great job of Shuri and I'm looking forward to her being the new Black Panther personally like I said you're not gonna do any better with recasting T'Challa with a different actor. So in the comics, it makes sense why Shuri could take over. But Angela Bassett in this movie, we do not give Angela Bassett enough credit, people, because Angela Bassett is one of my favorite actresses. Wayne the XL, what's love got to do with it, which she got nominated in, but she damn near deserves. In the, in the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress next year. She, there is a scene in this movie where she, where she is just screaming, she is crying about how she is giving everything to Wakanda. And she does a very good job in the movie. Everyone else, Winston Duke, Denai Guerrero, Florence Kasamba, and Lupita Nyong'o, they all give emotional, dedicated performances. Direction wise, again, Ryan Coogler does a very good job at what he's having to do with the tragedy that he had to work with. I also really like the scripter. The scripter is very mature, is very emotional. There's not a lot of comedy in this film. So, for a lot of people who say Marvel has been too jokey, even I've heavily criticized them for this, this is a breath of fresh air to see that. So, all of that, I think, is really well done and is very emotional. The score by Ludwig Gorenson is beautiful, if emotionally investing. And I do love the score in this movie. It's emotionally powerful. And I even like the song choice by Rihanna. You can tell this is a different soundtrack from the first movie because this is in memory of Chatwick and you could definitely feel that everyone was on the right page and also I did enjoy how this entire phase that it makes sense that WandaVision started this out with talking about grief and Black Panther will come forever concludes it talking about grief and that's has been the main overall thing that they've been touching upon in phase four despite some frustrations those the moments of grief having to move on from avengers in game having to move on from thanos how things can change for better or worse 
And I think no matter how many people don't like this current phase, the themes of grief and certain things they touch upon in the MCU always comes ahead. I only have a few issues with this movie. It's not major. One, I will say there is a little bit too many subtitles in here. Now, I don't have a problem with reading subtitles in movies, especially for an Asian film. But there's just maybe a better way you could have handled the, the subtitle situation here, as far as that goes. I will also say there is at least 20 minutes in the middle of this movie subplots and some characters you could have trimmed down. It still would change the fact that this isn't a very emotionally charged movie. But there, the movie, it does overstay its runtime by just 20 minutes. And you could have, could have trimmed down some of that a little bit. And also, this is just my little negative, but I did not enjoy the character of Ironheart in this movie. Now, the performance of Dominique Thorne is great, but I can't help but feel like this is just a girl version of Tony Stark. Now, she's supposedly different from Tony Stark from what people have said, but I can't help but just feel like it's, it's just Tony Stark, except as a girl. And also, I don't really think she's that important to the young avengers in the future maybe we'll see i'm not gonna watch the show next year she does feel like an add-on to her show she's not that important compared to kamala khan or kate bishop or patriot or america chavez or even the twins billy and tommy she's not awful she does have some moments where i laughed and i think the actress dominique thorne she does good in the role i'm not gonna say she's bad in the movie i just don't really think she was necessary to the plot here and also there is this whole thing with martin freeman and julia louis dreyfus that's pretty much a setup to the thunderbolts but I think they were also pretty good as well. I feel like that could have been cut. But I understand why they are here. So you do have that MCU set up. But it doesn't take away from the fact that it is a more emotionally charged movie. It is a more emotionally powerful film. And it does take away a lot of that. Here. And it doesn't change the fact that this is what you're coming to see. A loving tribute to a fallen character and a fallen actor. So overall, when it comes to Black Panther Wakanda Forever, while this phase has been a crazy up and down adventure, and there's been some things that's frustrated me and some things i just chosen not to see, I'm happy to say that Wakanda Forever closed out this phase in the satisfying way, the same way WandaVision started out. And this is another one of my favorites in the phase. An emotionally satisfying tribute that not only continues the franchise of Wakanda in true style, but also pays loving homage to its fallen star with Chadwick Boseman. He would honestly be proud. So if you are a fan of the MCU or if you love the first Black Panther, I would definitely recommend seeing this in theaters. He's already making his money back. $330 million overall globally. But if you're not a fan of the Black Panther movies, I don't think this is a movie you're going to enjoy. Just know that this is going to be a more emotionally charged movie than the first one. And it's going to be a movie about dealing with some heavy themes such as grief loss and the cycle of violence i'm gonna go ahead and give it a better than vampire academy well that's gonna do it for the video that you just watched i will have my channel here so you would like to see anything here click the channel icon subscribe for more i will also leave a video and maybe a playlist here so in case you want to see what i'm about as always stay up assassinist join the assassinist and you guys keep it cool